All right, guys, so this is the uh, first video of the daily question. So these are two questions. Uh, this one should be neurology and biostats. So uh, let's see if you can get these right. Uh, more of an informal video, but uh, let's see how you do. All right, guys, so the question reads, uh, which of the following is most likely responsible for the finding on autopsy? Okay, so again, scan your answer choices, and you can see that they're talking something about hemorrhages, subdural, subarachnoid. So let's read the question. It says, a 42-year-old woman who complained of severe headache dies several hours later. Autopsy reveals blood on the surface of the brain after the bony calvarium and dura is removed. The pathologist is unable to remove the blood by scraping. Which of the following is most likely responsible for the finding on autopsy? Is it A, blunt force trauma to the medial middle meningeal artery? Is it B, long-standing hypertension? Is it C, subarachnoid hemorrhage? Is it D, subdural hemorrhage? Or E, migraine headache with underlying space occupying lesion? So you have to have some knowledge, obviously, of, of the different types of uh, uh, hemorrhages in, in such the brain, but the key to this question is, after they remove the skull, basically, in the dura, they had this blood uh, that they were looking at. But then they couldn't, they, you know, of course, they try to scrape it, per se, and it's not removed. So what's occurring? And that's where they're trying to test your knowledge on this. And, you know, I'd say Pathoma does the best job that I've uh, come across that really describes this. And it goes like this. You know, if, if here's uh, for simplicity of the brain, and then you got these layers that, that kind of a... Uh, kind of just a little bit of a, I don't want to say like a plastic per se, and you have three of them, okay? And going from the outside in, you got the dura, arachnoid, and pia, the, the, the dura mater, the arachnoid mater, and the pia mater, okay? So again, dura, arachnoid, and pia, and then attached to the uh, dura, uh, moving from the outside, is gonna be the, basically the skull, okay? The bone, all right? So, or in this case, the bony calvarium. So, and, and that's pretty much right up against it, pretty, pretty solid. So then, so here's normal. So then you have to determine, okay, where do you have, you know, where is the lesion? Is it above the dura? I mean, yeah, above the dura, meaning epidural? Okay. Now we said, well, look, if, the, if this dura matter is, is tightly t attached to the bone, if there's blood in there, um, let's think about that. If the, here's the dura matter, and then if it's attached very tightly to the bone, if there's blood in there, it's going to barely, it's really hard to detach it. So you're going to get this little bit of a uh, finding on imaging and stuff, right? You're just going to see it like this. Uh, best way I can describe it. Now, if you go one step in underneath the dura or subdural, okay, uh, so here's the dura and then here's the bone tightly attached and then you got the arachnoid and then there, there's space in here. So if there's a lesion or some type of, I um, shouldn't say lesion, but there's blood that's pulled in here, you know, this isn't significantly attached. So this is going to take up a, a little bit bigger area. And so on the imaging, per se, it's going to be more of that lo uh, longer, you know, much bigger kind of area on that, okay? But again, it's subdural, okay? And then the other one that we have to kind of be obviously look out for is going to be the uh, subarachnoid. Uh, but again, that's going to, you're going to be thinking, okay, well, that's somewhere probably in the brain uh, and such. Now, what causes the epidural? Historically, we've always said that's like a trauma. They always talk about like a, a, a skiing accident or they hit their head and then they're dead a couple hours later, uh, per se, because it took time, right? It takes time for this to happen. Uh, when we talk about subdural, we talk about, you know, obviously underneath the dura, but then this is the one to where we always think about the bridging veins, okay? And this is when we think about like an, an older person who has that atrophy of the brain. So when the when the brain kind of uh, atrophies and, and shrinks a little bit, it creates more space in here. Um, and so then we think there's more room to, to have some damage to like say the bridging veins. And again, that's, that's typically your, your classic uh, subdural. And then the subarachnoid is gonna, the, is gonna be the one where they have that intense headache, right? Uh, uh, circle of Willis, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, but again, that's in the brain. So, back to this question. They remove the bony calvarium in the dura, 
Okay, so, you know, technically this piece, they said, look, he's out. But then uh, when they're looking at the blood, they can't, they can't seem to get rid of it. So what's, what's probably happening? There's something on top of the blood, right? There's something on top. So we can Im immediately kind of say, okay, look, I know it's not an epidural because if that was the case, it would be gone. It wouldn't even be there because we already removed the dura. Um, and then is it going to be a, uh, you know, kind of a, a sub, a sub arachnoid? Well, they, they kind of, they, they removed it. I'm sorry, so I'm sorry, excuse me, subdural. Well, they removed it. Now, if it was a subdural, then once they remove that, they should be able to kind of, you know, you know, kind of scrape it per se, and it would go away, but it, but it doesn't go away. So there must be some type of layer, okay? There must be some type of layer or film, for lack of better words, because they can obviously see it, that's there. So we know it's not going to be the sub subdural, uh, because there's obviously something there in between it. And if it was a subdural, then they'd be able to scrape it away. So which of these is left that makes the most sense that there's, it's probably uh, something covering it? Well, it's gonna be in the brain, okay? And that there's probably a layer, you know, covering this thing, that, and that's why they can't scrape it. And so that would lead me to subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage. You know, it's like, a, it's a ruptured hemorrhage. We think the uh, ruptured aneurysm, I'm sorry, uh, I think, you know, cerebral arteries, and, you know, the, if they try to describe it, it looks more like a bruise, per se. I've kind of, I've kind of read that. When it comes to long-standing hypertension, I think I, I remember it's like lenticulate uh, striae. Uh, that's kind of a, kind of where I always think about that, and that, that's not really, you know, this thing happens suddenly, and then, uh, you know, severe headache, then dies suddenly, so I'm not really thinking long-standing anything. Uh, and then migraine headache, space occupying lesion. There's nothing that indicates that 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 this is due to a space occupying lesion that would put you in that direction. So the only answer, the best answer, is going to be subarachnoid. And they're testing your knowledge of do you know how to go uh, dura arachnoid pia. And really, the key is knowing if something's epidural, subdural, or subarachnoid. Okay, underneath the arachnoid. Okay. All right, good question. So answer, answer choice uh, C. Now, this one, uh, you know, despite we're doing all this stuff, you can't lose the biostats, guys. That's our bread and butter. Uh, it says, uh, if the test is positive, then what is the probability that the patient has a, that has, that the patient has prostate cancer? So anytime, anytime you see this two by two table, um, you know, I want you to think, and, and they ask something like this, man, you just got to go straight back to what we know. Now, we can read this, and it says, a new test is being developed to screen for prostate cancer. The gold standard of the test has been PSA. Results of the new screening test are as follows, blah, 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 blah. That's just smoke and mirrors. This is where you make your money, okay? Now, if the test is positive, then what is the probability that the patient has a positive test? What are they asking there? That's the positive predictive value, right? Test is positive. What are the chances of it actually being a true, a, a real positive test, and they have the disease? That's what positive predictive is. But you should be able to know from any type of table, sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value, okay? Sensitivity, top left going down. Specificity, bottom right going up. Positive predictive value is top left going to the right. And negative predictive value, bottom right going to the left. And again, whatever we circled goes on top. So sensitivity, we said top left going down, so that's 80. And then what we drew a line from this this box to this one, so we go 80 plus 20, okay? And then we get 80 over 100, and so sensitivity would have been 80%. All right, uh, let me see, yeah, 80, 80 over 120, 80, 120 is 80, 80%, 80 okay? Now, for some reason, I'm just kind of, I'm catching myself on this. And if I said specificity, I'd go 100 going up. So I say 100 over 100 plus 40. So I get 100 uh, over 140. Two, I get five, seven, um, 71%. Okay. Po uh, positive predictive value is top left going to the right. So that's 80 over 80 plus uh, 40. And then uh, that would be 80 over 120. Divide by four, two thirds, which is 67%. And then negative predictive value, bottom right, going to the right, to the left, I'm sorry, 100 over 100 plus 20 is 100 over 120. 
256-5683. All right. So again, if you see something like this, you better be able to nail these out in like instantaneous. Step one, step two, step three. All right. In this situation, they're gonna they're asking for the positive predictive value, and so you're gonna go uh, 67%. You gotta know this, guys. Hope it's helpful.